So once again, that's Alex Volochnyov, Distributed Data Show at Accelerate Live. And today I have a very special guest, Vene Cella. This gentleman works as a cloud database architect at Netflix. From Datastax, this is the Distributed Data Show. Man, that's very promising. And I believe you're also a Apache Cassandra contributor for many years already. Yes. So first of all, introduce yourself, please. We have some guests there. OK, thank you. Thank you, Alex, for the introduction. Um, I'm Vinay Chala, Apache Cassandra committer and a cloud database architect, um, working as part of cloud database engineering team at Netflix. Um, it's almost uh, five years with Netflix. Um, but before that, I started my journey back in 2012 with Cassandra uh, very early on um, with 07 version, um, you know, with a old uh, thrift based client, yeah, Hector, yeah, yeah. worked a long time with Nate on that as well. Um, you know, it, it's a great story uh, the way I started with Cassandra back in 20, uh, 2012 when I'm coming from a totally different background of, uh, you know, microservices and mm -hmm. uh, uh, relational databases. Yep, yep. So then, uh, when we started looking into uh, these NoSQL databases, we looked around several other uh, databases, including mm -hmm. Mongo. And uh, all the performance tests uh, were really proven that the Cassandra was the right way to go back then, even yep. early on, like 07 version as well. Um, then that is when I you know, um, started working with Cassandra and Cassandra community. Mm -hmm and uh, then join Netflix, uh, which is mostly runs on Cassandra. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot, uh, lot of applications use uh, Cassandra at Netflix. Uh, so, yeah. Great, great. Uh, so you have a talk at Accelerate? Yes. Uh, one do. or two? I believe two, uh, you I have, have two. two. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what, what was your talk yesterday? Yeah, yesterday I was uh, talking about full query logging and uh, uh, capturing the live traffic and replaying it in, uh, you know, in Cassandra environment. That, that's a cool thing. That's a really cool thing. I've implemented something like that many years ago for uh, MySQL. Oh, cool. Yeah, because uh, sometimes you really like have to replay production load on the yeah, uh, yeah. staging. Yeah. And that's a uh, very essential thing. That's really good what we have it now. Yeah. It goes live uh, with version 4, I believe. Yes, it is. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yesterday with uh, Jake Luciani, we also discussed that he's also pretty excited about that. Yeah, ima Great. imagine the days where you know you you capture the live traffic coming to your Cassandra clusters uh, in a production environment and you know clone it and put it in your near real time environment or a yeah. QA environment. Uh, you know, see the beauty yeah, of it. That's, that's amazing. That's yeah, really amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for that yep. as well. Especially when you are looking for some bugs, some weird bugs happening. Yeah. That just that's incredible tool. Yeah. Just incredible. Yeah. Okay, and today you talk about? Uh, I'm talking about uh, photo features specifically in terms of uh, performance, uh, reliability, and compliance. Uh, yeah. What is coming in photo and how that makes uh, Cassandra photo much more easy to operate mm -hmm. and you know, um, get your compliance checkboxes ready, you know, <laughs> with photo. Yeah, great. Uh, so, what are you working on right now? Uh, so, right now, uh, I'm focusing on uh, uh, Apache Cassandra management process, which mm -hmm. is uh, also called a sidecar uh, in the community. Um, along with that, um, uh, spending a lot of time um, benchmarking and testing uh, and getting the photo out uh, to be used in productions. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, uh, operational complexities involved in uh, running Cassandra in production or in cloud environment. Um, so I would like to see a Cassandra in a stage where uh, it's easy to uh, getting uh, get started with Cassandra yep. uh, as any other uh, modern cloud services are uh, you know getting started is is a matter of minutes yep. uh, and also taking it from uh, development to production also should not involve a lot of complications yep. in terms of operations and deployment um, with I'm really hoping with Apache Cassandra management process uh, sidecar uh, we're gonna make it much more easier Great. to run Cassandra uh, you know, starting with the development and all the way to the deployments. Yeah. Um, so we are trying to uh, address a lot of operational challenges in bootstrapping, configurations, uh, token management, uh, you know, monitoring in terms of health and metrics. Uh, also, you know, backing up, restoring Cassandra, um, and and also uh, you know, doing the rolling upgrades and uh, rolling restarts. 
uh, you know, much more easy yeah. uh, with the Cassandra management well, process. Well, that's great. You see, uh, someone cares of operation, guys. Yeah. And that's great because, well, uh, some part of my life I was working in development, but also I did some DevOps ops operations and. Uh, like, okay, someone wants to make our job easier. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Yeah, guys. yeah. So Thank we, you. I mean, as a developer community in Apache Cassandra, we are all not only looking for uh, making, you know, uh, developer life mm -hmm. easy in terms of using Cassandra, but also making, uh, operate. I mean, you know, operating Cassandra is much more easier too, you know. Um, that's one of the goal uh, that we are, uh, that yeah. I'm focusing on. Uh, along with that, there are many other interesting things in the Cassandra space to work on. Yep. So. Cool. Uh, so, uh, with Sidecar, uh, I understand. Uh, what about your performance monitoring, testing, you say you are doing? Oh, yeah. So, uh, with the Foro, we are spending a lot of energy with, uh, and working with the community in terms of benchmarking Foro and getting it out uh, with a you know, rock solid stability and performance. Uh, so we use um, Netflix data benchmarking tool, which is NDBench, mm -hmm. uh, which we developed at Netflix uh, to benchmark any of our data stores and to certify data stores in our production environment. Uh, so when we use NDBench and test it in, the, uh, in our environment, we try to simulate our production usage pattern, mm -hmm. production query patterns, and uh, you know, uh, spin hundreds of nodes clusters, yeah. um, and test it at a real scale uh, with a real, I mean, close to real workloads. Um, you know, to uh, test any of these new features. Uh, so we will be releasing um, blog posts on that as well um, in coming months. Mm -hmm. uh, once all the benchmarking is done for Foro. By the way, guys, Netflix has extremely just incredible useful technical block. If you aren't following them, you should, definitely. Oh yeah, I really, I'm doing I really. it all the time. Thank you so much, right? Yeah. So many useful there's information. A, there's a great content out there. Uh, uh, not just movies, but also technically. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> technically so about movies, but yeah. well, okay, movies is a big. Um, what's, uh, so version four comes up this year, I believe. Yeah. Finally, yeah. finally. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. It was a long time. What's the most important, interesting things are coming in? Oh, oh yeah, uh, so, Foro is coming up with a you know great set of features and um, uh, amazing um, performance results. So uh, if you come attend my talk, which I'm giving this afternoon, yep. I'm going to talk in specifics of uh, performance improvements and uh, features in terms of uh, you know compliance domain, as in audit logging. That is one of the features that I worked on in Foro. Uh, which ensures that um, your Cassandra database is enterprise ready with all these complaints check boxes. Um, and also, uh, in terms of uh, reliability, uh, there's an um, internal messaging is completely rewritten with uh, async networking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that makes it much more reliable, uh, but not just reliability, uh, but also highly performant. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. it saves a lot of network traffic oh, yeah. and time. Yeah, and so and a lot on. of uh, uh, thread context which have been reduced. We, uh, we saw how many uh, thread context which is happening yep, yep. in Trio, and we compared it with Foro. Yep. It's really uh, amazing to see that. This thing is a really uh, great thing because oh, I'm very into automated scaling. That's one of my favorite topics. Yeah. Well, that's just uh, that looks like magic. You need yeah. more firepower, <laughs> you get it. But it always was hard uh, with the databases. Like you easily can run an application, new instance on a new server, and that's it. With uh, traditional relational databases, it doesn't go so easy. Yeah. Uh, with uh, with uh, Cassandra, that's way much easier. But still, if I have like one, two terabytes per node, mm -hmm. uh, spawning a new node, bringing all the data to it, bootstrapping that will take like oh, some time. Yeah. So you're really uh, getting into the topic of uh, zero copy streaming. I love that. So yeah. we, we we have done benchmarks on uh, zero copy streaming. Uh, the main idea there is to avoid uh, copying the data to the user space mm -hmm. and send it across a wire uh, and uh, you know avoid all the serialization and deserialization costs um, with the zero copy streaming we have seen five times uh, improved streaming performance i mean you can Perfect. really see uh, it not only uh, helps in operations but we are actually talking about cassandra availability here yep. so imagine a scenario where uh, in a cloud environment, you have um, a number of nodes down, and maybe a node terminated by your cloud provider. And if it takes, you know, hours, of hours to, you know, stream the data, uh, there's a high probability there would be another another instance which could be terminated Absolutely. as well during that time. Yeah. And yeah. then you're talking about Cassandra availability. 
but with the introduction of zero copy streaming, mm -hmm. when we are talking about copying the data in matter of minutes, mm -hmm. we are not CPU bound here. We are in totally network bound here. Uh, we go at a full throttle uh, with the network speed, mm -hmm. and we also we are also talking about increased Cassandra availability here. Yep. Yeah, that's really cool thing coming in Cassandra 4.0. I see. Um, one question about uh, Simeon RVM. Yeah. Uh, hi, Chaos Monkey. Guys, when I first learned this approach, <laughs> I was so damn excited. Really, <laughs> that's just amazing. It was, I was thinking to this direction, and then I just go read a couple of articles of it. Man, that's amazing. So, um, Simeon Army, Chaos Gorilla, Chaos Monkey, people are asking actually, how do you run that? Uh, do you do it against the Cassandra and so on? Uh, very interesting question. So, uh, Simeon, um, uh, the Chaos Monkey in Simeon Army exercises are automatically, by, by default, on, on all of our service stack. Uh, sometimes we disabled it on our Cassandra stack, mm -hmm. but we are working really hard. I think we are uh, close to enabling back it again in Cassandra. And okay. we used to run uh, Chaos Monkey on Cassandra uh, for until, I think, couple of years back okay and uh, due to some other um, operational uh, issues we had to stop it but yep. we are enabling back it again great uh, so but kiosk I mean I have a sticker on my laptop I don't have it with me but <laughs> you know kiosk monkey uh, can't do anything to Cassandra you know yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know maybe we have some guests who doesn't know what's the Simeon army and chaos monkey and so on so those guys are crazy they are just going to their production and shut down some servers automatically all the time yeah that's very uh, and imagine doing yeah. it for persistent stores like cassandra and cassandra yeah. that survives about it, everything you know? i really like this concept because you see a lot of developers are optimists and that's a bad problem actually mm -hmm. they write the application like it will run all the time you have to bring your team to the understanding things will be broken network lags any network delays power outage and if you are not thinking of reliability when you're going to be dead with uh, Simeon Army, go read about that. That's important and big thing. Okay. <laughs> so, you work with Cassandra Community and Apache Foundation and yeah, Apache Community for a pretty long time. Yes. How was it? It's great. I mean, the community is great. Uh, Apache Cassandra Community specifically is much more welcoming. Uh, so what I've learned over years working with the Apache Cassandra community is to getting a time of other committers to review to to review your design to review your code is very important. Yeah. Uh, as part of the process, what we have learned um, is to communicate effectively in mailing lists mm -hmm. and in uh, IRC channel, and also in the, through the JIRAs. Um, once we have that figured out and it's much more easy to work with the Cassandra community. Um, and also there's a new process uh, that Cassandra, Apache Cassandra has introduced mm -hmm. recently uh, called Cassandra uh, SIP, Cassandra Improvement SIP. Process. Mm -hmm. So if you have a design out there and you want to float it through the Cassandra community, it's not a hard task. Okay. You know, go to Apache Cassandra Wiki, everyone has access, create, I mean, write up a bunch of sentences about your design and what your ideas are, put it out there, it will be brainstormed yep. and be, uh, eventually and get in, uh, you know, bring it to the life. Yep. In the very end, that's always about the community. A community, yeah, that's, yeah. that's why that's what matters. Yeah. Um, and, and for the community, uh, it's also our responsibility to make it much more easy mm -hmm. uh, to reach. You know, approachability is one yep. of the important yep. things. I think uh, with the Cassandra introduction of Cassandra implement process, that would be mm -hmm. much more easy to reach Cassandra community to get your ideas out there and to get discussed. Yep. Um, actually, getting a bit more into the community, for what do you find the most important uh, qualities uh, for an um, open source contributor? How, how, I mean, of course, that's a developer usually, but uh, what kind of a developer? Yeah, so there are no restrictions as, as in you, uh, you know, you need to have Java expertise or no, there's nothing like that. Uh, I think Apache Cassandra, you know, good good way to start working with the Apache Cassandra community to be a contributor, just to start, you know, uh, talking about it, you know, start uh, contributing to the documentation. Um, 
maybe you know start opening bugs and uh, Jira reports um, through the Apache Cassandra Jira, uh, and just brainstorm the ideas. Um, I mean, that's an easy uh, way to get started yep. uh, with Apache Cassandra community. Uh, so. um, take a look. What would you uh, say to the um, well beginner to intermediate developer with some Java experience, but not so strong, not so like uh, real ninja? Um, using Cassandra and wanting to contribute to that. Uh, to the Cassandra ecosystem. Yeah, so what's the first steps? Um, I think I'll start with the Apache Cassandra uh, Jira? GitHub, GitHub and Jira. Uh, GitHub and Jira. Uh, so go through the open Jiras and there is a label, a low hanging fruit. Start picking mm -hmm. up them. Uh, it, can be, it can start with the testing. Uh, there's a lot of um, uh, area to improve on in terms of Cassandra testing. So that's a good way to start. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good way to uh, gets your uh, get your hands dirty on Cassandra code yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, guys, uh, go contribute to Cassandra. That makes Cassandra better and it makes you better. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, okay, my favorite question. Your favorite bug. We all of us encountered a lot of different bugs, and some of them were pretty catastrophic, and some of them were actually really funny. Yeah. What's your favorite one? Well, <laughs> there are a lot of um, interesting bugs. Uh, in the past four or five years, uh, but one thing I can, you know, which we recently hit, you know, in a few months back, mm -hmm. um, when the repair overstreamed a bunch of data and oomed our Cassandra clusters. I see. Um, I mean, there's um, it's fixed now, uh, but we ended up uh, overstreaming a lot of uh, data and uh, also uh, built uh, heavy multiple keys in memory and ran our clusters out of memory. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> you had a lot of fun, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's one of the recent ones. But uh, Cassandra is a great area. Uh, you know, it's a it's a very wide community. It's a it's a very bigger project. So there are a lot of areas uh, that we can uh, get community help. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm really looking forward. Uh, for Apache Cassandra community to grow further. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And okay, guys, I know you were waiting for it for almost 20 minutes already. I know what you want me to ask him. <laughs> Man, we need numbers. Numbers, 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 numbers. How big is big? <laughs> what, how many nodes you guys run at Netflix? How many data you have per node? How many data in general? Uh, sure, you have a lot of number of questions. There you go. So we have tens of thousands of uh, Cass Apache Cassandra nodes yeah. running in our uh, environment. Uh, hundreds of Cassandra clusters, and we're talking about petabytes of data there, and uh, we're talking about tens of millions of operations per second. Wow! Uh, you know, we are a very nimble team. We manage Cassandra as a service for the entire Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, we are talking about petabytes of storage even in our batches. Uh, so tens of uh, hundred uh, of thousands, thousands of, of nodes. nodes. Yeah, that's a lot. I believe. Uh, last report from Apple was uh, something like 115 thousands, mm -hmm. and that's like <laughs> it's really huge. Yeah. So, uh, guy, I run a lot of uh, Cassandra events in Europe, and uh, one question people ask me all the time uh -huh. is, um, how much data do you put per node? Um, so, it totally depends on our use case. So, we work with customers closely, and based on the uh, usage pattern and latency requirements. Uh, we we have heavy dense nodes which mm -hmm. runs all the way up to terabytes, multiple terabytes, mm -hmm. and we run uh, you know, pretty thin nodes as well, a uh, couple hundred gigabytes. I see. So it totally varies, and we are on AWS, so we use um, uh, different uh, instance types, all the way from smalls uh, to extra large. So uh, yeah. So, are you involved into the uh, big node uh, feature? A big node feature? Yeah. No, I'm not. Oh, okay. Aware. Yeah. Well, good. So, I really like how it sounds. Tens of thousands of nodes <laughs> and thousands of clusters. Those guys, those guys have some Hundreds size. of clusters. Hundreds of clusters. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for being with Thank us. Thank you, Alex. I Thank believe you you'll have time. your talk uh, coming up pretty soon, so I have yes. to release you now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much.